Hey everybody, welcome to chapter 8, section 5, Solving Rational Equations. Uh, full disclosure, I'm home today with my sick baby girl. Say hi, Amelia. Oh, okay, whatever. Um, so if you hear any cute baby noises or little whining noises, it's not me. I know what you're thinking. It must be me, but no, it's not. Um, and then if you hear any other noises, it's probably my two dogs. This is the sound of them licking each other's mouths. Oh, and a sneeze. All right, let's get started. So, um, cross multiplying. Okay, so we're solving rational equations. We've been dealing with rational expressions for four sections now. Now we have them equal to something, okay? So, uh, the best way to start this off by is to just kind of refresh you about cross multiplying. So here I have... 6 over 43 equals 2 over 5x. So we're going to cross multiply and divide. What's 6 times 5x and what's 43 times 2? Well, 6 times 5x is 30x and 43 times 2 is 86. So then you just have to divide. So I'm going to divide both sides by 30. And I'll type that into my calculator. So that can reduce to 43 over 15. Um, or if you get the decimal approximation 2.867, uh, would be the rounded answer. Uh, but yeah, that, that's really all there is to that. So let's just keep moving on. So here I have 5 over x plus 7 over 4 equals negative 9 over x. So, oh no, what do we do? Not everything's over x. Well, let's get your like terms together on the same side. So let's just subtract 5 over x to the other side. All right, so we got 7 over 4 equals, and we're going to do negative 9 over x minus 5 over x. So what's negative 9 minus 5? That would be negative... 14. So I'm going to write negative 14 over x. And now I can cross multiply and divide. So I have 7x equals 14 times negative, I mean negative 14 times 4 is negative 56. All right. And then I just need to divide by 7. And I get x equals negative 8. And so that's all there is to that. It was just getting your like terms together on one side, you know. So add or subtract it over. And then cross, multiply, and divide like you would with any other proportion. All right. So let's see here. We have, um, you know, a slightly more complicated proportion. Um, but the process is, is not going to change. We're going to do 3 times 4x plus 5. Hold on, let me deal with this. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway, um, that's going to equal 9 times x plus 1. And uh, you got a couple decisions to make. Um, probably the one that will make most sense to you is to just distribute, but I could divide 3 to both sides. Um, watch, divide 3, divide 3. So by dividing 3 to the other side, you have 4x plus 5 equals, and 9 divided by 3 is 3, so we have 3 times x plus 1. And now we're just going to distribute the 3. So, you know, you could have gone back and distributed like this, but honestly, it just makes your number smaller. Um, I just think it's easier to do it this way. 4x plus 5 equals 3x plus 3. All right, and now we're going to uh, just solve for x. 3x is smaller than 4x, so I'm going to minus that over there. And that gets me x. And then I can just minus 5 over to the other side. And 3 minus 5 is negative 2. So it looks like I got my answer. x equals negative 2. Alright, so uh, 
if you feel like you're getting the hang of this, maybe pause the video and um, do it yourself. That extra noise is um, my daughter drinking out of her sippy cup, by the way. I'm sure the mic is picking it up. Um. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Alright, here we go. We got 2 times 3x plus 2 equals 10 times x plus 2. Again, you could elect to distribute. Or, since I know that 10 can divide 2, what I'm going to do is just divide out that 2. Because, um, in my opinion, it makes things a little easier. So, this is going to be 5 times x plus 2 now. And then I just distribute that. Alright? So, 3x plus 2 equals 5x plus 10. Okay, so 3x is smaller than 5x, so I'll minus that over there, and then that'll leave me with 2x, and um, that means I have to just take this 10 over to the other side, and 2 minus 10 is negative 8, alright, so now I just divide by 2, and I get x equals negative 4. And I'm done with it on that one. Okay? So hopefully this aren't seem, seeming too bad. Um, but uh, let's just increase the difficulty a little bit by using the least common denominator. So don't worry about this example. If you're one of my students, it won't be on your paper. I changed my mind about that after working it out. But this one... Um, so we have 1 minus 2 over x minus 4 equals 4 over x. So I need to take this 1 and I need it to have the same denominator as x minus 4. Well, we know that anything divided by itself is 1. So I'm just going to take that denominator of x minus 4 and put it over x minus 4 or under. Yeah, I don't know. No, yeah, anyway. Minus, and then I can just write the rest of the problem as it appeared equals 4 over x, okay? And so what I just did was I found the least common denominator. Hold on. Ooh, you okay, baby? My students know where you get it from. <laughs> so I'm going to do minus 2, x minus 4. So that's going to be x minus 6 over x minus 4. <laughs> equals 4 over x, alright? And so, we're going to cross multiply now. And so I have 4 times x minus 4 uh. equals x times x minus 6. Alright? So, there's nothing I can divide, there's no like, it's not like I can do 4 over x or whatever, so... Let's just distribute on both sides. And I get 4x minus 16 equals x squared minus 6x. So once you get an x squared, you should automatically just be like, I need to get everything to one side because it's going to turn into a factoring problem now. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to minus 4x and add 16 over um, to the other side and so it'll equal 0 so it's gonna say x squared minus 10x plus 16 oh, those are my glasses equals 0 alright so what are my factors of 16 that add up to negative 10 well 8 times 2 uh, adds up to 10. This is a negative 10. So 8 and 2, and if they're both negative, it makes negative 10. So I could just say x minus 8 times x minus 2 equals 0. So look, now we're going to have two answers. 
um, 8 minus 8 equals 0 and 2 minus 2 equals 0 so x equals 8 and x equals 2 and that's it so yeah like I said it would be a little bit more complicated alright um, let's move on to the next one and last one actually so we have negative 2 minus 8 over x minus 5 equals 3 over x so we have two choices here well um, you can turn this negative 2 into having the same denominator as this but if that last example was too much for you um, maybe this is a little bit easier I'm gonna add 2 over to the other side the reason why is because 3 over x is a, a more simple denominator so I'm gonna have negative 8 it doesn't matter if it's on the side or on the top uh, the negative negative 8 over x minus 5 equals 3 over x plus 2 what am I going to put 2 over? Anything divided by itself is 1. Take that common denominator, x over x. That would cancel out, make 1, that would make 2 again, see? Um, and so now, I just have negative 8 over x minus 5 equals 3 plus 2x, or 2x plus 3 um, over x. So here, just because we're used to writing it the other way around, I'll change it to 2x plus 3. It's not that big of a deal, though. All right, now we just cross multiply like we've been doing. And so this is the fraction line. We have negative 8x equals x minus 5 times 2x plus 3. x minus 5 times 2x plus 3. All right, we're going to have to distribute this. This is going to make 2x squared. That's going to make 3x. This is going to make negative 10x. For all my people that don't listen to the audio, this is a negative 5, not a negative 3. All right. And then I have to do negative 5 times 3, which will be negative 15. And it still equals negative 8x. So just like the last one, get everything to one side. So I'll add 8x over. And now it's going to say 2x squared. And then we got 3x plus 8x minus 10x. So that's just x. So 2x squared plus x minus 15. And now it equals 0. Okay. So what do you do if there is a number in the front now? Multiply it to the back. What's 2 times negative 15? Negative 30. All right. So what are the factors of negative 30 that add up to 1? they got to be 1 apart. So 5 and 6. 5 and 6. Now, which one should be negative? It's got to be a positive 1, so I'm going to make the 5 negative. So I'm going to write x minus 5 times x plus 6 equals 0. All right? And so now, since we multiplied the 2, we're going to divide it back out. So 5 over 2 doesn't simplify, so that's going to become 2x minus 5. But 6 over 2 does, that turns into x plus 3. All right? And then you just set each of them equal to 0. So um, you have 2x minus 5 equals 0. And honestly, this one you can just do by looking at the previous step, x minus 5 over 2. That would be positive 5 over 2. So look, let me show you the work. Add 5. OK. 2x equals 5, divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 5 over 2, or 2.5, and then x plus 3 equals 0, x is going to equal negative 3, that one's pretty easy, 
because negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So negative 3 and 5 over 2. Um, I guess I forgot to write equal 0 on this one. But um, yeah, uh, equal 0 right here. That's going to wrap up the notes. Thanks for watching. Um, hope my kid feels better. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.